instead of playing the G octave, um, you know, I played, say, the G octave, I would play on the fifth fret mm. of the uh, G string, right? Hang on, where am I? C. So the fifth, the fifth fret of the D string. Yeah. I should have been playing it. On the A. The neck. On the A, yeah. Yeah, because, by, and then, and in fact, swooping up to that note would then give you the preface to the note. Mm -hmm. That would then give it another feeling, and as well as the thickness of the sound, yeah. playing notes on thinner strings gives you different quality. Mm -hmm. um, all of that stuff. So I, I realised that I wasn't actually respecting um, the, the the general place that the bass line existed in mm -hmm. the song. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't just notes, it was touch. And it was actually that was a massive, massive lesson for me. I think that that understanding about the importance of nailing um, the feeling mm -hmm. of the riff, not the feel, mm -hmm. the yeah, feeling. Yeah, the feeling, yeah. Yeah, that which I call touch. Yeah, and um, that is so important um, because it's what I've used all through my session career mm -hmm. by paying that much attention to, especially bass lines that I didn't write, mm -hmm. even bass lines I did write that I might have forgotten how how I played it on the day. You know, mm -hmm. just going back and listening again and making sure I nailed the feeling by playing the notes in the correct part of the bar, uh, bass neck yeah. and things like that. And the plucking technique, obviously the tone is affected by your settings and the amp, but the tone is influenced by your touch. Yeah. And in fact, I just did a video for Fender on touch and tone. Yeah. And then I did another one on taste, because I have this theory. Do you want to hear my theory? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. 